It finally happened. Bludgeon is getting a new Generations figure, and it's potentially a remold of Legacy Tarn, one of the best molds in the last few years. Oh man, I really hope they're not lazy and give justice to one of my favorite Transformers. R really? Yeah, really. And shockingly, it's fantastic. This is Transformers Legacy Evolution Bludgeon, my most hyped figure in like three years? Seriously, I cannot think of a time when I was this excited for a new toy. And it gets to be Bludgeon, finally! After over a decade of waiting, he can make his grand return to Generations toy line in a proper scale. Albeit as a repaint. Okay, 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 okay. Look at this box. This is killer. I never get to talk about this because I don't upload. But I love how the legacy boxes and box art looks. Bludgeon being absolutely no exception. He is so cool. Also, take note of the prefix comic universe. This isn't a G1 bludgeon. Stop trying to criticize it for that. If you want a more G1 bludgeon, Super 7 has you covered as mediocre as that toy is. Seriously, I don't get it. Yeah, so I feel like I gotta get this out of the way. And as this is the biggest caveat to this toy's existence, he's a head swap repaint, which is oddly lazy for Hasbro nowadays, especially considering all of the weird and wacky characters who have been getting extensive remolds in the last few years. Having one of the biggest antagonists in the comics be nothing more than a lazy repaint feels rather... odd. That is until you take a closer look at Tarn himself, and you start to notice just how much of the design was changed to both suit him and Bludgeon. While this mold is obviously still meant for Tarn, you can't help but notice how much Bludgeon actually crept into the molding. This actually reminds me of last year's Legacy Alita 1, which when revealed was clearly meant for Minerva later in the year, but still had quite a few Alita 1 details making their way over to the molding, and especially in vehicle mode. Does this mean this wasn't lazy? No, definitely not. It more so means that this was planned, and intentionally baked in from the start. Bludgeon wasn't half-assed, he's just... kinda half-assed. So that brings us to the actual toy, and this is absolutely killer. Bludgeon has one of the coolest color schemes in all of Transformers. Orange and green are colors you don't often see on these robots, so having them blended together with a splash of red makes him pop. Not to mention the use of orange transparent plastic to give a nice glow, much more so than his mold mate, Tarn. And I'd like to point out how well the color breakup helps him stand out from Tarn in a meaningful way. Like having the chest be orange surrounded by black and silver, whereas Tarn didn't have a distinguished chest. Just another part of his torso, really. I think Bludgeon's influence has also applied to this figure's proportions. Tarn is not this lanky in the legs. Tarn is very wide and bulky in his thighs and legs, whereas Bludgeon is more slender and agile. And I think here they met a middle ground between the two. While I always found it a bit odd on Tarn, it works wonders for Bludgeon. Bludgeon also has some of the best articulation in modern Chug, taking the highly poseable Tarn figure, giving it a sword and a skull, and ramping up the energy creates one of the most energetic toys you will ever pose. He flows so well with violently crazy and wacky poses, much more than the reserved and like hulking Tarn. Bludgeon just uses the articulation so much better. And I need to talk about that head. Bludgeon has had some of the worst head sculpts I have ever seen on a character toy. Somehow a skull, or even a robotic skull, is incredibly difficult to get right, and it has taken the character's entire existence to finally land on a good one. This head sculpt is elite. It's based on his appearance in IDW2, which, in my opinion, is the best bludgeon design to date, taking inspiration from every version of the character up to that point. This face aims to blend the skull face with the more reserved and robotic face like, say, Cyberverse. And it does that with flying colors. This head has basically saved this figure for me. Oh, and a common complaint I've heard about this head, besides people wanting it to be more skull human looking, is the fact that it looks like he's screaming. Well, I'm here to clarify, he's not. The little red box inside of his mouth is his voice box, which is what he talks with. The skull shape around his head is more likely than not a mask, which doesn't move in the comics. So no, he's not screaming, stop saying that. As for accessories he comes with, it's the same cannons as Tarn, over here they're meant to go on the back like in IDW2, which completely kind of overhauls his silhouette, and that is awesome. And to my knowledge, it's not something Tarn does in the comics, so, you know, here's more bludgeon baked in molding. He also comes with a sword, which is absolutely awesome, and is a necessary accessory for the Master of Metallicato himself, though I do find it a bit odd that it's based on IDW1 bludgeon, not his IDW2 design. Kind of makes this a weird mismatch of bludgeons, but it doesn't really matter. Though it is possible that with this sword and his original concept head, 
that it was more so based on the original IDW bludgeon rather than the new one. Which I think would have been for the worse. Not that it's a bad design. It's just, that's a lot of teeth. And Hasbro doesn't have the paint budget for that. So transformation is the same as Tarn. I'm not going to go through it. It's a repaint of Tarn. You know what it looks like. Though I find that flipping Bludgeon's head around before putting it into the chest helps with paint chipping. Which is what happened with my Tarn. Though you do have to tilt his head slightly to get it back out. Other than that, it's basically the, it's, it's a repaint of Tarn. I don't know what you were expecting. And vehicle mode is awesome. From what I can tell, Tarn never really transformed much, and this certainly isn't what his vehicle mode looked like. It looks a little closer to what Bludgeon turned into in IDW2, but again, it isn't really there. If anything, it's a sort of weird mismatch of the two, similar to robot mode, but more so here. I do still like this tank, and I love the orangey glow it gives. There just isn't much to do with it. And yes, the hands are still on the back. It's repaint. So what's my final verdict then? These are completely different animals. I understand being disappointed in Bludgeon for the lack of retooling, especially with the lack of hip skirts and him needing a new chest and some new shoulders. But to me personally, as a hyper obsessed Bludgeon fan, this radiates his energy so well, especially with all the baked in molding that just didn't belong to Tarn. Unfortunately, it means that Tarn has Bludgeon details and Bludgeon has, well, the entirety of Tarn. But at least they both look killer and if nothing else, this isn't the last bludgeon. We'll see him again soon enough, as the Master of Metallicato seems to pop up every few years because of trademarks. Should you get it? Yeah. Thanks for watching. See ya, see ya.